we're upside down. Great start. <laughs> All right, it is time for Friday Reads. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. This is going to be my Friday Reads, which is the type of video where I share how my reading has been going, including what I've finished, what I've started, and anything I'm carrying over week to week. This is a bit of an unusual week. Actually, last week was as well, um, but this week, I think last week I had an inkling that this would happen and this week I've actually made the decision. So I'm I'm actually, uh, my reading's going to shift a little bit going forward because I am going to return all of my library books. I can't remember if I said that last week or not. Anyway, so I am going to return my library books. I'm going to do one less trip than I expected. I just had a sense that this would be a smart idea. And after I made the decision, it became clear that yes, this is a smart idea. So this will free up my like time to be doing other things. And I'm going to need that time. So we're doing one less trip. But before I returned the books, I did finish a couple more books. Um, and and I didn't finish others, <laughs> as always the way. So I'm going to talk about the library books first, and then I'll talk about what I am currently reading and what I will be working on next week. Um, so I did finish the ABCs of Triangle, Square, Circle, the Bauhaus Design Theory. Um, this one I'm also reading for Roberta's bookish bingo for the prompt of a book with B-E-R-N-A in the title and it's all here and actually some is up here as well so it got a lot of letters um, and uh, so I fulfilled that prompt and so yay one out of nine I actually think I got a sequel in I finished a sequel last week so two out of nine yay um, so anyway this is a non-fiction art book about apparently about the Bauhaus d design and theory um the Bauhaus and design theory, I actually felt like this kind of went off the rails in the middle, like it started talking about history, which, you know, a history of the time in which, you know, things were happening, uh, made sense. Um, but then it just, it kind of, it's so, it's too bad because like, visually, there's a lot interesting going on, but I didn't always feel like there was a super strong connection between what it was talking about and like the images it was showing even though it says it was, I don't know. I also was had to finish this, so my reading pace was a bit faster. But then, it, you know, it just goes into some, like, history and theorists and I just, and economic changes. And I didn't always make the connections. Actually, this part about fonts and stylizing fonts and making and making simplifying things there is also an uh i hadn't so, and then I, I can see this actually the one of the things that was interesting okay cool just super cool even the threads of the signatures match the colors see how it's yellow red and blue which matches like you know it, it was done with care it was done with care but then there's all there's all this like Freudian stuff about, you know, roles within the family dynamic and father, mother, child, and, you know, which is progressive and which is objective and which is subjective. And I would, it's all like, in terms of gender dynamics, it's just like, no, like, just no. Can we just not? This is actually, this is an interesting part. They had this thing about, um, it's hard to explain, but they, sent a bunch of artists and designers this blank uh, triangle square circle and said fill it in with yellow, blue, and red, and then the different choices that people made, and then some people explained their choices and some people didn't, even though explaining their choices was part of the exercise, some people didn't. So that was interesting, and, and the, the making, I'm trying to remember, there's this part about simplifying fonts that I did find interesting, but there is in it, there is all this stuff about fonts. I, just, I you know, I gotta get back to outline alphabets. Um, but there was, when it got into that sort of simplification, it, one of the things it's talking about is moving towards more, so moving away from subjective and a more objective, like, kind of perfection and I think in terms of some design I can understand that you're tr like trying to achieve perfection um with whether that's with simplicity or or efficiency but with art I feel like you 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 draw 
out the heart of it if you're going for perfection. And I don't mean that you should aim for imperfection in your art, but I feel like if you find like the one perfect thing, then that means everything else is what? Imperfect? Doesn't have value? You know, and it's, and I think trying to say either art or design can be completely not subjective is just not true. Like, even if you're balancing something with a, 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 a certain parameters, those parameters, somebody decided them and they're not 100% objective. It's just not possible to be 100% objective. Like you can be like in terms of a spec of a project, like what we're going for today is the most efficient use of these four tools you have available. It's a very particular spec, but it's it's talking a bit grander, you know, in terms of like a whole font, like making it perfect. I'm like, but it is subjective. So I guess I have strong feelings, which is good, but I felt like when it got to sort of the Freudian stuff and I'm like, even though it's just sort of like I don't know how much it was saying this is like true or should be followed I'm like yeah no we're not we're not on the same page anymore we're not on the same page anymore we're not going into those gender dynamics and family roles and saying that that's no 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 done <laughs> so I kind of checked out around that point um but I did finish it and I'm happy about that I did also finish another nonfiction art or film book, uh, and that was everything I know about filmmaking. I learned from Seven. I've learned watching Seven Samurai. Wow, I have a hard time saying that. I guess if I wrote the sentence, I just I would structure the grammar a little bit differently. Um, so this is a recommendation, or this author's work was a recommendation from uh, Reed Becca, and I watched Seven Samurai, and then I read the book, and it was a really interesting perspective to go sort of it doesn't go scene by scene per se and actually I thought it was a little oh some of the timestamps seem not an oh it must be the second disc that must be what we're going for the second disc because I'm like this is like near the end and it says 49 but I'm like but the movie's three like the version I watched was three and a half hours long <laughs> There are multiple versions of the film. So anyway, I this was really interesting. Um, I love seeing all of the stills. I love giving to sort of like revisit the characters and um, see like the different and learn a little bit behind the scenes. I don't always want to know behind the scenes. The author is very, very familiar with this particular work. It does have a Criterion um, release. Um, the Criterion release has, it sounds like a fair uh, booklet with it. And I think there's also at least one or two uh, books written by uh, Akira Kurosawa that talk about this or interviews. It might've been interviews. So there's a lot of source material to go for, not just the film. So it, it picks moments in the scene uh, or in the film and then talks about them for me I feel like I, I'm not sure that like w I feel like the strongest thing I got from this work was how much the author loves the film like it is very very clear and knows the film um but for me I feel like I have such a personal response to the film because i you know, I love the film too, but I saw it, I think about 10 years ago for the first time. I saw it in quick succession. I think I saw it and then I also saw it at the Cinesphere. I made my sister and her husband come see it with me. It was just really long. Maybe I, maybe I made them come see Rashomon. This is really long. So anyway, so I did also see it theatrically, like at a theater as well, a small theater, but still. Um, and then so I watched it again and I really enjoyed it. But it's like the moments that meant something to me and the things that I picked up on weren't always the same. So there was a sort of cherishing of certain scenes or certain moments and knowing some behind the scenes does influence how you see something or how you uh in, and a lot of people enjoy things in that way and for me I want to cherish the work as the work I don't want to know necessarily behind the scenes is that something I've learned throughout the years and that's something that's harder and harder to do because there is so much information online often about works um but this is you know this is the film is from the 50s so this was really a really interesting read it's a really interesting experience too to go through seeing something oh, yeah the, the bandits here we are disc two so that's that's when the timestamps get different um 
but yeah, and um, and some of the some of the terminology for the film stuff, I was very familiar with, and some I was less familiar with, and it was often described. Actually, I think it was described most times. I didn't. I was worried about uh, using a lot of acronyms uh, and short forms, but they didn't do that. So yeah, so this was a treat. I'm thrilled that. Uh, oh, it's actually. I thought it was a reference library, but um, or the which also has some circulation stuff. But it's actually North York Central that had it. Uh, so yeah, so I'm glad that they had it. Lower lobby. I still remember. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in North York Central over the years, um, so it's it was the big new library that went in sort of more uh, north of the city. So, uh, yeah, so two, actually, and these both count for goals because they're both nonfiction art books, so I finished those. There are also some that, sadly, I did not finish, including mammals mammals I didn't even actually get out of the introduction for this one this was so much fun and honestly I just I had so much joy oh classification I should just take a picture of that um finding this and looking at it and having remembrances of a book that I got out of the library when I was a kid that was similar and I have tried to look for other similar books and I've had actually no luck I couldn't find anything on script couldn't find that much on the library, like, um, in terms of the uh, online system, like Overdrive. Maybe I should look at the tags that this has on, for this particular book on the library and see if that, because I feel like I'm just not hitting the right search parameters to find something else like this. I would totally buy this, but there's only, there's one seller selling it on Amazon, um, like a third party seller, but they don't have the best rating, including some of the people saying I got something that different than what I ordered. So that's pretty. <laughs> so I'll keep an eye out. Um, otherwise, it might just have to wait until next year. I am going to leave it on my currently reading for now. We'll see. I might make deci different decisions about that. Another one that I didn't quite finish, I got very close, was Ray Bradbury on stage. Um, this is a collection of his plays. I have only three left. I have 100 pages left. And the three, um, two of them are based on works I've read, The Kaleidoscope and The Foghorn, and then it's P Pillar of Fire. That one is about 50 pages and I wasn't able to finish it. I just can't finish it in time. I'm just gonna have to go back and I will have to, if I wanna finish it, I'll have to get it next year. So that's a big bummer, <laughs> I gotta say that was it, but I just, I didn't have the time to finish it. And then I also didn't finish Street Art by Simon Armstrong. This is a nonfiction art book about graffiti and street art and street artists. Um, I got about 70 pages in and it's about 170. I just couldn't read it at the clip to, um, to finish it. It's got lots of artwork in it, lots of interesting stuff, um, you know, and uh, I, it, it's not something I know too much about street art, you know, and it is quite... Uh, uh, it, it was just interesting to see and hear about it um, from a quite academic perspective, you know, so it's a quite a bit of a, you know, something that you, you don't know much about and you experience, you know, probably if you, if you go for walks, you could easily experience it every day. Um, but who does it? Why do they do it? How much do we know about it? You know, um, is it you know, is it art? Is it uh, illegal? Is it both? Is it, um, you know, um, there's there's so many questions. So it's interesting and engaging, but I wasn't able to finish it. I may or may not keep this on my currently reading. I might put it to um, uh, hiatus. I do have a hiatus shelf, but to be honest, I looked at it. I'm like, I never go back to it. Like, honestly, I started rereading, or I started up again a book from my hiatus shelf this here and I didn't even remember it was on my hiatus shelf so I think I don't know what I'm gonna do I might for now I'm just leaving it on my currently reading I may or may not request it next year I don't know if I did I might have gotten enough from it that I can leave it as is and leave it as unread I don't know if I enjoyed it quite enough to commit to finishing it next year I'm not sure another book that has to have a decision is um uh, a Pocket Full of Crows by Joanna M. Harris. I really enjoyed this. This is sort of like a, it's an illustrated, some illustrations, um, and it's a retelling of something, the child's ballads, which I don't know anything about. Okay, so it's not every page that there's a, a, a an illustration. I thought it was quite engaging. 
Oh, I didn't get that far. Um, and there, well, maybe I'll show that one. So oh, this one, it's a, it does have a bit of a getting to a bit of a romance or a relationship feel, and it looks like that uh, could be the case. But I'm just not familiar with it. It says a modern fairy tale of love, loss, and revenge. Perfect modern classic. So I didn't get to enough to it. I it's on one of my lists. The quick way to broaden your reading horizons it's on that list um, and it's not available digitally and it has illustrations i'm thrilled that the library has it go go centennial <laughs> whoever does the ordering there um and um so i i will probably request this one next year i'm going to mark it as unread because i only got about 20 pages in i am surprised that week to week to week i didn't come back to that one i think i always had another speculative fiction title that i was prioritizing so those are what i'm going to do with the library books that I didn't uh, finish. I did actually finish a lot. If I meant to tally them up, I but I don't know. But even just on this library trip, I was aiming for, I think, 23 finishes, and I got to like 19 or 18. So I have read tons of books from the library this summer. Um, I, I do feel like I'm calling it a bit short. I know it's the right decision. Um, I am a little sour about that. But that's sort of, honestly, that's a bit of the rhythm of things. I get really excited. I get I get tons of things, I read tons of things, I get even more things, I read even more things, and then I get even more things, and it's like, oh, that's, okay, now we're into, like, overwhelmed too much territory, and I hit that a bit quicker this year, so that also kind of means it's time to wrap things up. So I will be returning all of the books, and then I will be back to my own books, and I'm going to stick with the format that I talked about last week in terms of my currently reading and choosing my next read kind of situation, which is to work with picking a main title for the four priority categories or big bucket genres that I read, which are nonfiction, speculative fiction, romance, and everything else. And so, and then I also read uh, kids books as well as visual works. So for this week, I am continuing as always for <laughs> Les Miserables for my uh, literary or everything else pick. I'm not, I'm a little, little behind. I need another about 10 pages, which I can manage. Um, and I want to stay on track with this one. It's in a section that I'm not that interested in. It's very much building up to something. And I'm just sort of like waiting for not only that to happen, but for whatever happens as a result of that happening. And then I'm going to be more interested in where we go next. Um, I'm not super clear what's going in terms of what's going on right now, what the connection to the whole is. Um, so sometimes he doesn't tell us until after there's a lot of setup and you don't know why it's a relevant. And then, you know, later, becomes relevant. Um, my speculative fiction title that I'm reading is The Last Guardian by Jeff Grubb. This is the third in a World of Warcraft series of books, um, and I haven't read a lot from it uh, this week, uh, but it's a fantasy title set in the world of Warcraft, um, and it follows a young-ish um, mage type character who is apprenticing an old mage type character, and there's quite an adventure going on, and I find it quite lovely, to be honest, uh, just because the world is so familiar. It's the third I've read in this series, and I play the game and have been playing it pretty regularly for quite a while, and I did play, play it on release, so it just is fun, you know, like I'm just, it's just been fun. And then my romance, technically speaking, I did continue Beautiful Creatures. I am returning it, um, but I can get it digitally, so I did switch to reading it digitally. I have read it a few times. I haven't added it to my currently reading, so obviously I haven't decided if I'm going to commit to it. And thanks for Mel for mentioning, yeah, it's not a trilogy, it's a four book series, so if I read it, there's a lot, but I only... I can't... Beautiful Darkness, I think, is the second book, so that is the one that's on my current... on my oldest on my Goodreads TBR, and um, so that's the one that is like the goal book, but I have to reread Beautiful Creatures. Again, I'm enjoying it, but not tons. But really, my romance pick is actually Pirate's Passion. No, that's not it. Pirate's Persuasion by Lisa Kessler. This is one of the books in the Sentinels of Savannah series, which features immortal pirates and also other um, characters that are uh, paranormal sensitives or psychic. Or This one, sh the she can talk to ghosts. 
Um, and uh, so that's it's a romance between a woman who can talk to ghosts and an immortal pirate. I mean, I love this series so very much. And Lisa Kessler has put out several books this year and last year. So like when I started this series, I think it was last summer, um, I think there was only like three books out. Now there's like six or seven. So I'm like, I want to get up to date, but I have been reading it rather slowly, but it is very, very enjoyable. The kids book that I'm reading right now is The Heist, which is again, one, one of these Star Wars adventures in wild space books. I picked one of them up from the library and it was like the second book. So I went back and read there was like a z zero book and book one and book two and now I'm on book three. It's a kid's sci-fi, you know, space fantasy adventure Star Wars. It's a very easy read. I am just going to keep reading these, to be honest. Now, I'm, I'm not even terribly invested in it. It's just the right pace for right now, which is why a lot of these other books weren't getting read because this was the book that's the right pace right now. I'm just feeling very tired and there's a lot going on. Um, I did also start up again Devil's Line. Um, this is a manga series, a paranormal thriller with some romance, um, and uh, I just started up with volume nine. I would like to finish this series this year. It is a complete series, if I remember correctly, so I just want to have some slow and steady progress on that. Um, and I haven't read it for a bit, and I was reading it, and I was like, wow, the art feels a little bit different in this one, and I don't know if that's just because I've read other stuff in between and I'm remembering it wrong, or if it is a little bit different in this one. So that's um, the what I am currently reading, and then next week I will be getting to the Slippery Slope by Lemony Snicket. This is the 10th book in a series of unfortunate events. And um, I am buddy reading this with Izzy and Kay Kelly. And so I, I can't remember when the live show is. Usually I read these the week before the live show. So I think the live show is, uh, I, I will put it in the description box below because I can't remember. So if you've read the series or want to jump in at book 10 or book 10 is the next one you haven't read, you're welcome to join us. Um, I've really been enjoying reading the series and this is one of my favorites of of the set and so I'm looking forward to it so much oh my gosh it's gonna be great so yeah so that's where things are at for me in terms of my reading um, <clears throat> so all of the library books are gonna go back and then I'm gonna be back to reading my own books and books from the library digitally and hoopla and script I have lots of books like I have lots of books so but it is always this weird pattern with the library like the excitement so much so much overwhelm we're done <laughs> see you next year you know like that's just sort of the rhythm of things and it just is finishing a bit early and you know sometimes that's the way and uh, I just kind of knew it was going to be the case and it is and that's fine so everything will go back but my currently reading is going to be a little messy for a little bit um and uh but it actually I did finish some stuff so that's good <laughs> <laughs> and then the other ones I'm not I I can't uh, Pocket Full of Crows is gonna come off and then the other titles I'm not sure what to do I'm so I'm so happy slash sad about mammals um, but also I wasn't reading it, honestly, both it and Pocket Full of Crows and Street Art were all in my, my list of things to read week to week to week, but I wasn't grabbing them. So I think it's totally, when I look at it from that perspective, it's totally fine to return stuff because to be honest, I have the things that I am centered in, uh, Les Mis, uh, the Star Wars <laughs> adventures in wild space. Um, and, uh, you know, and I want to get back to the, um, Sentinels of Savannah series and I'm enjoying the WoW series and all of that is stuff that I'm getting from the library or Scrib. So um, so that's what I want to read anyway, I think. So it's just time. So there you go. There you have it. There is my Friday reads for this week. Um, I have some videos coming in the future. I think I have some both movie and TV stuff. So hopefully that will be of interest. Um, I'm really excited to get back to doing some uh, videos about both film and TV because they are two things that I enjoy very much and uh, I love sharing about them and hearing what you guys are reading so let me know what you're reading let me know are you going to the library right now do you hit this sort of like overwhelm too much have to return everything moment because it happens to me and uh, it just happened so it's time so that's fine cycles are cycles and uh, and there a new one will begin <laughs> at another time all right thank you so much for watching and I'll be back soon with another video video. Oops, I'm all upside down today.